<laughs> support Maokai. Yeah, it's better I than I disagree support. with you. Well, I will. You won't disagree with me on this. It's better than uh, Irelia support. Yes, that I is agree. definitely 100%. true. 100%. <laughs> yeah, well, here we go. Picks and bans for game number two. Najin, Emfire versus GE Tigers. And there's an Urgot ban again. And we'll see if GE can close this one out. I don't think they're going to be able to do it just as fast. That was the fastest game we've seen all season. There's a Callista ban, so GE not wanting to give that one to OQ, of course. And doubting, of course, that they would give it to Prey. Najin would have first picked that for sure. Yeah, let's we'll see where they go from here. Of course, the Evelyn ban, a bit weird. Very curious about why that was banned out in the last match. Nidalee. Okay. Taken out this time. Well, Lee's Nidalee did really make it very difficult for Peanut last game, and why not take that away? Taking the Twisted Fate away from Goom 2, just something that GE doesn't want to deal with. And interestingly, the interesting that Rek'Sai and Maokai both did not get picked in, oh, our, that last, is. in our last match. So yeah, I didn't even think of that. Changing some of these priorities in this new, brave new jungle world. And are they going to ban the Lulu this game? And obviously that has been one of GE's main picks because it does fuel the Juggermaw and it will be Cassiopeia instead. Wow, yeah. So what's the final ban going to be for the GE Tigers? We shall see. What do you think? Uh, I think they're going to ban the LeBlanc again unless they want to risk it being first picked by Goong. And hopefully Najin will allow Goong. Uh, Goong's such a good Ari player, so no Annie, as it turns out. Kane's Annie is good, and they may give that LeBlanc over yeah, to Goong. That's dangerous. Goong's LeBlanc is really good. Yes, it has been. All right, so this gives Sejuani over to Lee if he wants it. They also have that Lissandra. They're going to take the Sivir, though. Okay. So Lissandra, huh. that's actually, Sivir not a champion that the GE Tigers have really used a whole lot this season, but this is good. Again, they need to be more aggressive in the early game, and Sivir should allow them to do that. Also, the Lissandra will almost certainly be a mid pick uh, as, a, as a, a LeBlanc counter pick so that you can right. ring a Frost, win LeBlanc, uh, W's in just in order to catch her there and to trade eff efficiently. That's pretty common. So that's why they handed the LeBlanc over and banned the Annie instead. It's interesting to see the Sivir picked up, you know, without that Annie. We've seen that combination just be really common all around the world, but Gorilla obviously has a pretty deep champion pool, so that's not a huge concern. I mean, Nautilus is still good. Yeah, it certainly is. And it says wanting an Alistair. Oh, come on, Gorilla. I know you're not going to, but Quit playing games with my heart. I would love to see Smev make a return to the Scion pick. Would be pretty cool. And oh, uh, Rex Scion Nautilus. So we will be holding on. And just using that Lissandra as a flex, you're pretty sure that's going mid if you're GE, but you might as well just see the complete lineup and save any other decisions right until the very end. So Rumble could be played again. Nearby too. It's a pretty huge amount of engage for the GE Tigers too. This uh, LeBlanc may be in a little bit of trouble. Well, at least in terms of going all in, there are multiple ways to catch her when she does that right now. So with, can be punished. With but the amount of hard engage teams, do you think we're ever going to see Sona possibly come back? Mm, probably not. And oh wow, they're going to be going for the Twitch again right here alongside the Nar, so taking it away. Yeah. Could see the reverse matchup in this game. Of course, that Rumble is would work quite well. Very preferable for Nar. Uh, most, I think most, Ooh, play, yeah, most pro players tend to think that uh, Sona's laning phase just isn't working right now, and her, yeah, she's very really vulnerable in lane two because she's so squishy, so squishy. Very true. Yeah, and especially against a champion with a hook like a Thrash or a Nautilus, you if you get hooked once with Sona, you're probably gonna get killed. Yeah. You have, less you, burn a you, have, you have less health than a melee minion at level one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. <laughs> Got to start with Ruby Crystal, I guess. <laughs> well, there's our lineups. GE Tigers really going for the hard engage. Should be fun to watch those team fights. And Goom. You know, we'll see what he can do on that LeBlanc. He's a very good LeBlanc player, but you know, who do you try to burst down aside from Prey here? Yeah, it's going, to, it's going to be difficult, and they yeah. are going all in. So GE actually trying to play a composition more reminiscent of what KT beat them with in the past week. Yeah. I 
There's a lot of tankiness on the non-gen, so we'll see if OQ can execute this Twitch a little bit better. I would like to see Twitch played well once again in this meta, but they'll probably lane swap this game. And we will see. The game is loading up. Najin on the verge of yet another 2-0 this season. We'll see if Najin can stop them from doing it. Time to get in the game. giving the Twitch another try. I'm very curious. Gorilla mixing up his skins right here. I like the new skin. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's all right. It's pretty neat. I like it. Kind of turns into a big ax instead of an anchor, though. Yeah, which I don't is, know. I don't know okay. what kind of knight has an anchor. It's a giant ax, man. <laughs> an ax that you have a rope attached to? That sounds awesome. What are you talking about? <laughs> that sounds like the best kind of axe. Yeah. This season, uh, GE's only played Sivir three games. Hmm. So this really isn't a very normal pick for them compared to champions like Corky or Kogma or Lucian. I'll have more games on those champions, especially Corky. So this is, I like that this is another, I think, attempt to GE just to show show off some more alternatives going into the playoffs here. How about this, a lane swap from Najin as well, too? Yeah. Interesting. Yep. I, I was pretty sure this is going to happen. You don't oh. want to end up in that lane early on. You want to try and get Twitch, who uh, isn't noted for his lane strength these days. The coordinated skins. Those are the, the two new ones. It's good. Yep. Can't remember the name, though. Oh, well. Ah, well, <laughs> G Tigers as uh, finger puppets. Or maybe uh, Doug Trio from Pokemon. Only it's like <laughs> Doug Quintuple. <laughs> there you go. Mega it's, Evolution. It's technically right? Doug Quintet. Doug Quintet, that's true. <laughs> the Mega Evolution. And Gorilla got level two. What is he going to do with it? What's he going to get? Oh, you're going to go in for a sick hook. Is that's he, he going to go harass? The jungler? What is he doing? He is. He wants to go harass Peanut here. Oh my god. This is great. Do oh, it, Gorilla. Peanut's really low. Go Bloodthirsty, dude. Flash. There's the slow. And he's just going to go for red. Wow, look at this. Is he gonna, You can't kill red, Gorilla. Oh, he's got a shield. He actually can. Can he actually do this? I love you, Gorilla. Look at this. More damage on the Peanut. TP. Teleport coming in. There's the slow. Is it going to be first blood? They're going to give the red buff over to Smab. Hi, Goong. And now Goong <laughs> taking a lot of damage. <laughs> what is this game? Now dive him. Uh, <laughs> now dive Duke. Well, even Peanut laughing, he's like, all right, whatever, guys. <laughs> and they could dive Duke. They totally could here. The minion wow, wave coming. Is... Duke's impending demise. Goog's here, yes, but Meb. Lee's here too now. Smeb zoning out Goog, Goog, Goog only at half health, and this is the most obvious dive in League of Legends history. Oh, nice moves from Duke though, can he get out? No, not quite, there's first blood going over to Lee. A kill comes in though for Goog, are there gonna be any more? Yep, Goog goes down to prey, and they're gonna get this turret as well, looks like if they want it. <laughs> well, that was awkward. Okay, up oh, teleport coming in, yeah, so they won't get the turret. They could just dive this though. They could, yeah. Well, yeah. Kane's oh, here Kane's now. there. Never mind. Okay. Wow. Well, that that was interesting. All right. About a uh, little over a thousand gold lead for GE Tigers at the end of all that, and Gorilla getting majorly bloodthirsty. You see, this is this is to make up to me for not playing Bard. He knows he's disappointed me right now, so he's like, "All right, let me just do a solo jungle invade, make Doa happy." I, I'm happy, Gorilla. It works. You know what? What? This is this is the case study and why. It is difficult to jungle in a lane swap on your weak side because the support <laughs> can literally just walk into your jungle and ruin your jungle pathing and make you flash and be a jerk and mm -hmm. then you get teleported on and well this is it was so cool too because it was so well calculated from GE Tigers again very intentionally giving that level 2 to Gorilla specifically yes. for the purpose so GE Tigers responses both games in the early minutes have been 
very, very good in yeah, terms of I agree. harassing the enemy jungler. And this is a level of early game aggression that we just haven't seen from them before, but yeah. it's damn fun to watch now. Yeah, GE Tigers just really kind of flexing I, their muscles yeah, in this game. Obviously, if they were more serious, they wouldn't have committed that hard. They wouldn't oh, have yeah. TP'd. Like, that's kind of ridiculous. And this is also kind of ridiculous. Oh, Oku just dying so quickly, though. Gorilla taking that turret. Well, here comes Peanut. Misses the knockup, though, onto Prey. And Prey actually going to live. Whoa, Gorilla. You are a brave soul to come in and take that last <laughs> turret hit if you needed to. And what they a use a pink ward there under the tower just to detect Twitch yep. as he's oh, stealthing. Oh, Duke. There's knockup on the Duke. Are they going to get the kill here too? Smeb a little bit low, but Lee can handle it. There's a flash. Smeb knocks him back. Oh, Duke gets the kill anyway. But it's a one for one. Things have gotten a little bit silly, Monty. <laughs> this is not the most serious game of League of Legends. This is we've like seen watching the LPL. <laughs> it is, yeah. In a good way, in the best way. That's the, right. The games like this are why the LPL is fun to watch. It's true. Just constant, constant, uh, constant skirmishing. There is no, there is no back. You can only go <laughs> forward. It's a uh, Aram summoner's <laughs> rift. The only time you can buy is if you die. <laughs> That's actually the best definition of LPL I've ever heard. <laughs> That's, I mean, I've, I haven't watched a ton of LPL, but the LPL I've watched, that seems to be the idea. Yep. It's, it really is. It's like a, it's a mod they have on the uh, servers in China. So in spite of this, though, Duke has actually taken a pretty significant uh, gold lead in this situation. And Najin is going to switch OQ back into the Hecarim lane. They don't want to be harassed by this very scary combination of... Sivir and Nautilus early on. They need to get him to level six so they can actually start making plays and make sure that he gets the items he needs to right. be efficient. And it was fun, but it's time to get serious now, Monte Cristo. <laughs> yeah, also Smeb TPing down into the bottom side did lose him a lot of CS. So this is definitely not the safest oh, way to play a late Here we go again. Oku in a little bit of trouble. Kane is there to try to save his top, his uh, AD carry. We'll see if he can do it. Man, nice knock away. There's the chilling smite onto Oku. Oh, Gorilla threads the needle with the anchor. Can't quite get the kill, though. Kane very low, and here he comes over the wall. Kuro, there's the flash ult. He's going to go ahead and use it. There goes Peanut as well. Ignite burned. Everybody just going all in. Goon a little bit behind in the mid lane. He's going to come in and try to make up for it. Some kills. Oh, Gorilla turning around with no health remaining. Popping that passive on LeBlanc. They want this turret so bad they can taste it. Oh. Meanwhile, uh, I guess Goon's just going to get a kill onto Lee. Okay. Not sure how he died there because Goon used his ignite onto yeah. Gorilla. It was odd. Meanwhile, Prey just getting dominated by a Duke Snar there. <laughs> Time to back off. Yeah, go ahead and burn that ult. Yep. Save the summoner heal. This game is silly. This game is very silly. It's true. GE Tigers, though, already with a, a pretty silly 3,000 gold lead. And Duke does have that uh, big lead in the top lane, but everything else going GE's way big time. Let's watch this again. Yeah, OQ right there. They can't see him right now, uh, but they are able to unburrow on him. OQ is seen by the, the Tremor Sense, so uh, they do manage to wait until his stealth is out. Then we have right here, Kuro decides to flash for Kane, and then they go for Peanut at the same time for the double on Nakuro. All right. So Smeb's like, well, maybe I can finally get some CS. And he is down 17 to 50 to two. Well, that's right what now. happens when you <laughs> TP to take their red buff. I guess so. At level one, basically. I mean, there are there are penalties that you pay when you, when you do crazy dives. It's true. Now, he has gotten some rewards. He has five assists, and he's actually oh, wow. pretty even in terms of gold, but yeah. he is behind an XP. He's only 100 gold behind, actually. Pretty amazing. He's behind an XP, and a lot of that's thanks to the tower they took as well. Yeah. So He's behind an XP, but he's still only one level behind Duke. Make it's that two. two levels behind It's pretty Duke. bad. It's a pretty bad situation. It's not as bad as it could be, but uh, if you can imagine if that dive didn't go well and that then basically he would have been screwed for the rest of the game. And that's yeah. that's the risk that you take when we look at plays like that is, sure, it doesn't look bad, but the fact is he's two levels down even after that, mm. and you're investing a lot in the rest of your team in those plays. Now, that said, they have gotten a gold lead off of that turret, and oh. they're going to get a dragon. But having yeah. Duke really far ahead is dangerous because this is a patch that really rewards tankiness. And uh, you know, Nar is going to be able to do... 
absorb a lot of these cooldowns in the late game, and GE doesn't have the highest damage from their composition late, especially because of Lissandra. Smek did hit that level six pretty quick, though, after uh, Duke hit seven, so it's only, it looks like it's only a little over a level ahead, but it's still a full level, I guess. And now Najin and a four-man, the topside turret in response to the dragon being taken, at least get an objective out of it right here. Yep. And meanwhile, Bot lane still pushed up pretty heavily by Kuro. Pretty good Berserker's Greaves at a second item. Yeah, he Usually did. Usually you get that if you really want to push lanes hard. But well, you can only buy if you go back, so he had to spend his money, you know what I mean? <laughs> we've, uh, we've learned that this game. Whoa, what is this spell they're using? They're going back to Fountain. How is that working? <laughs> what? They have to they have to duel with Smep to the death before they get that. <laughs> the right to return. That's how it should be for a top laner, you know? You have to duel to the death before you can go back. Okay, well, Smeb going for the Ninja Tabi with the Home Guard first, and then moving into the Trinity Force afterwards. So it's going to be a while before he can do anything, though. Looks like Duke is going for a, a Trinity Force as well. He picked up the Phage first. Yeah, but he has. Uh, he's got he maybe going yeah. Phage. I don't know what he's doing. It's clearly Frozen Gauntlet. <laughs> He's building into that Glacial Shroud. He's going to get the Sheen later on. It's Don't worry, I got this coming. <laughs> Probably Randuin's after Fage, but we'll, yeah. we'll wait and see. Yeah, if you want to use Logic, I guess, probably. And GE takes another turret. He's going to bring them to about a 4,000 gold lead here at 11 minutes. That's faster than last game, actually. Uh, the skirmishing really did work out in their favor, in yes, spite of the high risks involved. Oh, boy. Okay. Is the pink ward worth it? Here comes OQ. A little bit of damage on the Gorilla. He's going to get exhausted. They're going to go in on OQ. GE going a little bit crazy here. Gorilla goes down. The teleport coming in. Lee over the wall. They're going to manage to take down Kane a bit. OQ still alive as the teleport comes in for Najin. GE going back to that tri brush. They could turn it around. Kuro opting not to go in with that E. Duke about to go Meganar, yeah. They probably want to get away from that. Whoa, here we go. They lock him up right before Meganar. He doesn't get a chance. Whoops. A little bit of miscommunication from Najin there. They're going to get Smeb anyway because he's not very tanky quite yet. Peanut still looking pretty good. Goong has to flash into the dragon pit. Meanwhile, another kill for Oku. Goong on the run now. There's a kill for Lee and GE Tigers. Still ends up uh, they're winning going this team after fight. this LeBlanc, though. Man, he's yep. just chasing oh, wow. him with Void Rush. This is ridiculous. This game is actually insane. And the funny thing is that GE is still winning all these skirmishes, too. They're now 10 to 5 in kills. But this is so good to see from GE. Yes, oh, yeah. it is overly aggressive what they're doing. Yes, it does carry risk, but they're they're executing it well. In spite of that, they've come to this big gold lead, and they're just playing a very different, like an extremely different style than we've ever yeah. seen them play before. And if they tune this back a bit, it'll be exactly what they yes. need to have a good early game. I agree. I agree. So. Uh, coming in here onto OQ, OQ trying to get as much damage down as he can, but Prey chases him out. They take out Kane via zoning, and then they're starting to pull back right here up the river, and a little bit of miscommunication. Duke goes in too early right here. He gets eager, and he just gets ulted right before he can hit Meganar, and then dies. It almost looked like his ult animation started, and uh, yeah. he died before it finished. And Prey just... Following it up right there with the flash. Yep. Peanut can't get over. And Goong escapes with about 50% HP. Kind of looked like Sezwani was just staring longingly into the dragon pit at the end of that. He just kind of stopped <laughs> and was like, I wish I could get there. Someday there will be a creature there I can smite. Someday. Yep. But for now, it's death. Yeah, this Twitch really isn't doing too well. Nope. In oh. the last couple of games, I look at Prey's advantage. Oh, Kuro going in. There's the ult on Goon. Can he burst him down? Passive popped. Yeah, Goon's in big trouble. Another auto should do it, and it does. Kuro gets it. Meanwhile, Kane comes in to try to save his mid laner. Oh, knocks Kuro under the turret. Peanut nice throws flash. the ult. Kuro manages to escape, though. Really good flash. Ooh. Held it for a long time right there. Yeah, he did. And he finally uses it to dodge the Sejuani ultimate. And well, that was Kuro was able to do that without even having Ignite up, too. So yeah. that's a indicative of his advantage. And that was situation. also with Goong having Abyssal Scepter already, too. So that was just a straight up massive outplay from Kuro. Oh, red buff taken by Duke, though. Managed to snag that away from Smeb. Yeah, Duke has been putting a uh, lot of pressure down yeah. in the top lane. It's about 
all that's going well for them so far in this one. Yeah, the CS gap is is closing though between Smeb and Duke, and we saw the money was already pretty even. They've uh, evened up on levels now as well, so the one advantage that Najin had is pretty quickly slipping away. Yep. Man, Indeed look at it the, is. Look at the mid lane. Jeez. 40 CS difference between Kuro and Goong right now. It's pretty damn massive. Yep. And that's going to be reflected in some items pretty soon here. And maybe 1v1s a minute or two ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is it. Najin is pretty, pretty darn far down in this one, and they're going to have to make very good use of this Twitch if they want anything at all. Kuro's going to figure out that there is a Aha. ward in the brush he was hiding in, but they've already set up for this dragon. Look how deep these lanes are shoved in, especially in bottom lane right now, and they have that pressure in the mid lane as well for this dragon spawn. Smeb with no teleport, so he's already walking down from top lane. Duke with no teleport either, and he's not going to be there. Looks like Najin's just going to give up this dragon, and they don't really have a choice. Can't really fight it. He's just playing a really good pressure game right now. Yeah, they are. I don't think Najin or, or anyone was expecting this kind of play style to come out from the GE Tigers. The audience politely applauding because they just don't know what else to do. <laughs> okay, well, Duke is just trying to farm next to his turret right now and freeze up so he can get some more items. Looks like he will be building into a Randuin's Omen next. Yeah. I'm not really sure why he picked up the Phage. I think he was just trying to exacerbate his advantage. He saw the CS gap and the level gap, I think, versus Smeb and assumed he had more of an advantage than he did when Smeb was actually much more even in gold. That's what I think happened here. Hmm. Seems reasonable. So he's trying to punish Smeb and get a snowball in at least one lane rolling in favor of Najin, but it's not really happening mm -hmm. in this one. And we should have a lot of money, actually. Yeah, he hasn't gone back for quite a while. He's been too busy getting kills, but he'll uh, go back pretty soon, I would imagine. Gonna try and dive the top side right now. Nar in trouble. He is exhausted from that Mega Nar transformation, but he has a ward. Yeah, he's got flash as well, too. Oh, oh wow. Going in. Look at that. Catches him right out of the hop, but the turret will be the true prize for the GE Tigers up in top lane. They'll take that easily. Infinity Edge already done for Prey. He's going to be doing a lot of damage. Oh, hello. Goom going in, a little bit of damage onto Gorilla. He's actually going to throw the chains in too. There's a stun onto Gorilla. Oh, Gorilla goes back in, backs away, still goes down. Will they be able to take Goom? No, Goom escaping. So there's a kill for Najin that won't be answered by a kill, but it looks like it might be answered for a for with a tier two turret. Alt again on the Duke right as he enters Meganar. Man, they've timed that well. Nothing really they can do right there. Prey and Kuro and Lee should be able to get this tower. Yeah, meanwhile, tower does go down in bot lane. Yeah, but in tier two of for tier one, and you trade kill for kill. It's only your support. You take out their top laner again. Yep, 6,000 gold lead now. Smev just standing right there in the tri brush, waiting to catch this wave. And OQ just hasn't been able to pick up these big kills in this series, hasn't been able to get that roam off. GE has controlled this Twitch extremely well. Yeah. I can't even begin to imagine what Korean Lissandra sounds like in Earth mode. <laughs> the stuff of nightmares, man. I'm going to play her in Earth mode. We'll get in the game and I'll do it just for All hilarity's right. sake. I got to I gotta play my Infinity Bird Swain at least once. <laughs> Infinity it's, Bird. Yep. You just activate the alt and then you've got it up for the rest of the game <laughs> with Earth mode. And, uh, but I'm really looking forward to Bard and Earth, just like the, the never-ending magical journey. <laughs> I basically have teleport up 100% of the time. The rotations would be so glorious, I Noah. know. And you can bring your whole team. That's the scary part. I know. We talked about this great. already, yeah. This is the ultimate Monte Cristo possibility. I will rotate with you, Doa. All right. With well, Green Lissandra? We will rotate together. We'll roam the map getting ganks. <laughs> no, taking turrets without killing people. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I will alt that turret and force you to go after the champions. I can stop you. I can stop you from getting objectives with Bard, you realize. Great. Thanks it's a lot. It's, at, it's simultaneously the ultimate Monty support pick, but also the anti-Monty support pick. 
the choice lies with my wins. <laughs> Great, just what I always wanted. <laughs> we rotate at my whim now, Monty. <laughs> It'll be good, though. I think I'll probably just, like, uh, use it to go across the map and just dance in their base, and then when they try to come and get me, I'll just, like, magical journey away. <laughs> It'll be good. <laughs> Because if they follow me, then they'll just get trapped behind my turrets. It'll be beautiful. Okay, well, GE, I think just waiting for Baron to spawn right now, honestly. It's not even 20 minutes yet, and they have a nearly 8,000 gold lead. I know. This is this is actually more of a stomp than the first game was so far. <laughs> Shockingly. If that's, if that's believable. <laughs> yeah. And that was, a, I believe it was, a, what, a 21-minute Baron game number one? We could be five minutes away from this game being done. Yeah, well, they certainly can go after it whenever they choose. They know Duke yeah. is not going to be in Megadar form anytime soon. Although they do have less damage, so they can't do it quite as quickly as they did in the last one. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to quite bull rush their way into the base quite as quite as easily. We'll see. They can kind of close it at their leisure now. And man, it, what, what a crazy early game, but they really did play, play it well. Yeah, it, it did end up shaking out in their favor, but obviously you can see the risks involved with that. There oh, is yeah. a very real possibility that Duke gets an insane advantage. Oh, Oak, you getting jumped on by Smeb. Smeb just all over. There's the ult and an easy 1v1. Yeah, just no chance at all. You just CC'd forever right there. Yeah, he got and ran that's, over. That's the thing. If Hecarim gets ahead, this is why Hecarim is such a great top laner right now. He can just one-shot your carry like that. And yep. There's really nothing you can do about it. And it's nice, too, especially against Twitch, because uh, as we saw, he just waited for him to pop that invisibility and just ulted in that direction. That was it. Q is an AoE. You can hit him, even if you can't see them. Very easy stuff. There's a Baron for the GE Tigers with the OQ down for the count. There's not a lot of resistance here. Goon's bottom side right now, too. So, yep. of course. A Baron dying much slower this time, but looks like they'll still get it. Najin thinking about coming in. Kane is there. And they'll get the Baron. Now they're turning around. Alt onto Duke. Oh, oh, the anchor barely missed for Gorilla. Missed. That would have been quite the play. He was about half health, though, so they may have just gotten him uh, blown up right away. Oh, there we go. Kane comes in for the knockup. Support and top laner going to try to make something happen. Peanut comes in, gets locked up by the ult from Lissandra immediately, getting very low. Gorilla zoning in the back of the fight. Goong is a bit low. He's going to back off away for now. GE turning, and there's an easy kill onto OQ. Welcome back to the game. You're dead. And Kane fleeing for his life, but he's going to get an anchor in the back pretty soon. Well, I... I would not have expected this one side Whoa. of a game. Kuro coming in for some extra damage. Know, GE right? has just been pedal to the metal all night tonight. And oh, we may be in for her fastest best of three this season. I think this is going to be our shorter, shortest broadcast of, of 2015 possibly <laughs> here. I mean, we're early in the year, but I'm calling it now. Oh, Dragon, third yeah. one of the game for the GE Tigers. And this is a very different team. Oh, yeah. In a good way. They'll just recall by and try to end. If they want to beat their last record, they have to end it in three, about two minutes from now. So I don't think they're going to be able to do that. But it'll be close. I don't think Twitch has anything to laugh about right now, but you just can't keep a good rat down. <laughs> He's a happy guy. He's laughing from from misery. It's it's an awkward situation, Doa. And that's how people respond sometimes like, to awkward situations. It's like the tears of a clown. <laughs> only laughing to, to keep from crying. OQ. That's OK. He has his ghost blade now. Surely this will save him. Mm. Time to spam emotes on the bot lane. <laughs> we can't do anything. If he walks up there, he has no wards. He well, his, his lane is pushing, too. So this is, this is literally all OQ can do right now. There we go. Prey's helping him out. Prey's like, ah, you want some farm, buddy. Here you go. I'll gotcha covered. Kid. What a nice guy Prey is. Yeah. He's a good kid, that, that Prey. Salt of the earth. He's good people. <laughs> Your Midwest side is showing I, I guess so, yeah. yeah. Well, then we'll go down to that bot lane, and I guess we'll take the turret. <laughs> Maybe go have a potluck after. Ride the snowmobiles around the lake. There, that's full Minnesota for you. Duke! Goodbye. I guess uh, getting blown up by Lissandra is also going full Minnesota, is it? 
Hey, well, GE Tigers has decided that they will not take the mid lane now. They're moving to the top lane instead. Oh, Q. <laughs> oh, I, I would laugh because I'd be screaming in terror I otherwise. I don't know what he thought that ult was going know. to do. Well, that was the prey part of spray and pray right there. But <laughs> it didn't work too well. Oh, man. He was like, Rito, take the wheel. <laughs> oh, boy. And there goes Nexus turret. And they actually, they actually might end it faster. If they go on the Nexus right now, they're getting kills in the meantime, turning on the Nexus. And if they do it in like five seconds, I think it was 25-9, and this one will be 25-6. Wow, and, oh, when it's not, okay. The timer kept going after the Nexus died, 25-10. They were one <laughs> second slower that game. <laughs> one second slower. 25-9, 25-10 for the second game. Wow. What a, what a ridiculous series tonight. Yeah, and both games combined were li less than, like, pretty much any Jyn Air game from this season. Where has this GE Tigers team been? I mean, Najin yeah. is a team. If we take a look at Najin's success, typically they do very well in the early game and then kind of fall apart later on when it comes to actually closing. But yeah. we've seen how dominant Duke and OQ and Kane could be in the laning phase, but today it was just <laughs> I don't. all GE. Holy cow. Wow. Dude, we've only been here for an hour and a half. What in the world is going on here? <laughs>